Uh, morning, everyone. We'll just go straight into it. Um, thank you for joining once again. Uh, today we have uh, Patrick Mawisana from Sakisizwe. I'll just have a, a short conversation be, before we start uh, and then it, it'll run through the presentation. I first met Patrick at, uh, at Varsity. He was, he was uh, almost done at the time, I think. <clears throat> He was working on the Maritime Museum. Uh, prolific uh, it, it drawing skills, uh, Pet, uh, freehand. That was absolutely, absolutely beautiful. So Pet, tell me just uh, in, in a few words, uh, where, where, where do you come from and how do you come about to, to study architecture? Okay, I was born in the mid seventies in Gauteng um, where both of my parents were working. Uh, my father was a truck driver in there, and my mother was a domestic worker. So we lived in this uh, area called Forest Hill uh, in, in Johannesburg. And then I had to go home when uh, it was time for me to go uh, to school. And the area is called Nundwing. And Nundwing is about 60 kilometers away from uh, Dundee. So I did my primary school there. Um, and up until uh, a high school. But fortunately, something happened there whilst I was in prim primary school. I, I realized that I had a talent to draw, you know, freehand uh, drawing. Then after my matric, uh, I applied at uh, ML Sultan Technicon and uh, I studied there for four years. And uh, it, was, it was a great experience, uh, you know, to study architecture in there. Amongst my teachers were Len Rosenberg, uh, Karuni Naidi, who is here, uh, Paula Da Costa, and many more uh, that, uh, that were there. Um, I think I realized that I really liked architecture uh, during my studies at, at Emma Sultan. Uh, this was very prominent because on my three years studying there, uh, I received a cons a con consecutively on my second year, third year and fourth year, I received uh, the overall uh, student awards, um, you know, on those years. So second year, third year and fourth year, yeah. And that's when I realized that, hey, I, I think this is a profession that I can pursue. Now, the interesting thing is that on the fourth year um, with the price giving, there was an employment contract uh, enrolled in there. And that's when I started to work. Um, and that was now in the late uh, 90s. And then as soon as I started to work, I realized that um, um, I need to you know, increase my, my education and, and further my studies to be an architect. And that's when I enrolled at the University of Natal at the time and then yeah the rest is history uh, then i qualified as an architect and and here i am lovely lovely but um let's let's just get then to to the presentation thanks thanks for that uh, background info yeah for sure yeah, yeah, so. well the journey is a destination uh, i picked these words from uh, dan alden Life is about the journey, but we truly won't understand the journey until we've taken it. But we try, and this was said by Matt Williams. Uh, some say living in the moment, some say uh, one has to enjoy the ride. And in architecture, this cannot be far from the truth. Uh, basically, there's no finish line. We're going to be looking at uh, work that has been done by the practice that I lead, uh, which is Sakasizo Architects. Uh, we've been working since 2006, and uh, we're looking at 2021. That makes us to be 15 years old. But what we will do here is not, we, we're not going to look at every project that we've done. We've cherry picked only just three projects uh, which are under construction. And then we've also looked at about two or three projects that uh, could not be built. That's the structure of my presentation, a little bit of our history as to where we come from. We're gonna look at how we do design and we look, we're gonna look at the build projects. We're gonna have a look at uh, two. I 
I think there's a break. Two or three unbuilt projects and okay. Sorry, Patrick. Let's just go straight back in. We lost you there okay. for a few seconds. Okay. I think I think we're good now, Pat. All right. I can't see it from my side. Oh, sorry. Let's just um okay. You can't see the presentation, Patrick. No, no, it's, no it's, it's not up, uh, Kim. Yeah, no, that's fine. Let's just try that again. Can you see now it? I can see it? Oh, fantastic, right. Okay, let's look at the history of our practice. I think there's a short um, uh, video of that. Kim? became independent in 2006. We started with four employees and by 2012 we had 16 staff members. Of whom, four were professional architects, nine technologists and support staff. Today the practice has got more than 20 staff members who are supporting the firm. Do I stay? Do I stay again, Kim? I think there's something that keeps blocking it on my side. became independent in 2006. We started with four employees and by 2012 we had 16 staff members. Of whom, four were professional architects, nine technologists and support staff. Today the practice has got more than 20 staff members who are supporting the firm. Sports complexes, 
and abbreviated export complexes. We also do a design and master planning of projects. Our design process comprises of four elements. We first start by analyzing the site, where we do intense and in-depth research. All right, let's look at our design process uh, where we spend most of our time doing things. Right, we've got a six step approach uh, when we're doing design. Firstly, we start by defining the problem uh, with an aim to give solutions. And then we look at uh, collecting the information where we collect all the data. And then we brainstorm and analyze the idea in our studio. And then on the fourth step, we look at developing solutions. And this is when we start doing physical models. Um, then the fifth step is where we present our ideas to the client with the options uh, of, you know, you know, via the models or even freehand sketches. And then the sixth step is when we improve on the design and then obviously the process goes in circles. We're gonna be looking at three projects, um, two of which are currently under construction. We're hoping to finish this in the next six months. Uh, and then one build project. We're going to look at Mangosu University of Technology project, which is currently under construction. Okay, this building is located within an active um, university campus, and it is it is called a student center. The building comprises of a cafeteria. The financial aid offices, the bank, the SRC offices, the radio station, and the gym. You can see there the site uh, faces due north. Uh, on, the, on, the, on the east, you've got the informal um, uh, settlements. And then on the, on the west, you've got uh, student raises and the playing fields. Mm. That's just a picture of what the intended uh, building would look like. This elevation is looking south, uh, where we don't need any protection on the windows, uh, enjoying the views of the playing fields. And at the back of the building, there is a, a, there is a library. What is notable on this uh, slide is that the building is actually sitting about 10 meters above ground. Uh, so in other words, the main entry point at the back of the building, uh, where the library is, is about 10 meters above ground. That's just another elevation looking at the building. On the other side, what you see on the left is an existing uh, sports pavilion, and our building uh, starts where the black uh, aluminum uh, cladding is. And as I've said earlier on, uh, the building is basically a student center. Uh, the top section comprises of the uh, offices, the banks, mainly the cafeteria, study areas. And then at the bottom, you've got the gym. Uh, and then you've got services as you arrive uh, onto the building.
That's just an elevation looking on the other side of the building, uh, facing the library. And you can see the activity uh, that is happening. We've basically created an activity street, which acts as a buffer between the library and the new uh, uh, building. Also, what you will notice is that all the different sides of the building look uh, uh, different. And they also address uh, the different uh, orientations of the, of the building. This is just a cross section showing the, the levels uh, and the height, uh, looking at the bottom of the site and looking at the top of the site. As I've said earlier on, you're looking at anything above 10 meters. Right on the ground floor, you've got the services, which is basically your plant rooms, uh, the covered parking areas and so on. And right above that, you've got the main gymnasium and related facilities. Above that, you've got the cafeteria and some interior sitting area. And then the main level has got the cafeteria, offices, and some common areas. Also notable on this um, uh, section is the use of natural light through the skylights. That's the picture that we took on site uh, about a week ago. Um, and you can see the effects of the structure and the very strong concept that we had to that we had to adopt. On the left hand side is the existing uh, sport pavilion which we had to keep, and then also the main thoroughfare on the on you know, from the top level down to the bottom level is on the left hand side. And then the main cafeteria is right in the middle where you can see the skylights next to the next to the. Um, crane over there, and then the offices are on the right-hand side. We hope to finish this building in the next uh, six months or so. That's another view, looking at the bird's eye view, looking at the top and looking at the, you know, on the, on the concrete work that is going on on site. This is just a, a short video clip which we had to prepare for our client uh, to uh, explain our design. As you can see at the bottom, that's where all the buses that are collecting students from all the different uh, residential areas uh, come and arrive. At the bottom, as I've said earlier on, you've got your parking for the staff members, you've got your services, and this is just looking at the roof at the moment is a very quick uh, video it shows the footprint of the building you can see the outside sitting area sandwiched in between the two buildings that's the view from the existing pavilion and those are just uh, that's just an open staircase uh, thoroughfare that's the view from the library looking at the outside seating sandwiched in between the two buildings main entrance um, highlighted in glass. We also had to use um, very robust materials, low in maintenance. So there's a lot of concrete, there's a lot of face brick. Uh, basically the intention here is to have uh, low maintenance as much as possible. Just, just another view. On the right hand side, you can see the ATMs and behind the ATMs, there is a bank. Those are the views to the playgrounds. That's just the cover um, on the outside of the building. As you enter into the building, it's very spacious uh, with the cafeteria area. Very much notable is a three pool volume space, uh, which invites the light from the roof. And also it invites the southern light from the outside into the building. Also very notable here is the views from the building into the sporting fields. Basically the, the building can be used as a sports pavilion if you've got matches happening. This is just a view looking at the student administration wing, drawing nature into the building, views to the outside. This is from the boardroom of the offices, cafeteria and shops. We've made sure that we give enough space between the students. In here, there are bookstores, banks, 
This is just the view at the gym and the medical facilities at the first floor, just above the parking areas. You can appreciate the views uh, you know, from the gym. The change rooms are at the back. What is also important to note on this building is that the whole building is actually paraplegic friendly. There is a lift that lifts uh, people from the bottom level right up uh, to the top level. There's another building uh, which is called Wat Duwuza Museum. It's located in Stenga. The building is also under construction. We hope to finish this building in the next six months. The site is located in the middle of town in Stenga, in a street called King Shaga Avenue. And uh, just directly up opposite our site, at the bottom of, the, of where your mouse is, that's where the King Shaga grave is located. And there is a strong connection between our site and the King Shaga uh, Airport. You will notice that there is currently a zebra crossing uh, in between the two sites. And you will notice that on our design proposal, we've actually proposed a link between the two sites uh, to basically slow down the traffic and also for pedestrians or the visitors to be able to, to visit King Shaga and also to be able to look at the, at the museum across the street. At the moment, in fact, before we started construction, there was a, a building which, is, which, is, uh, which was eight years old and donated by the community. And apparently this building is, is no longer enough to house all of, all, of, all of the artifacts. So the municipality came to us to say, can we create a building that can house um, you know, the number of artifacts in there? The inspiration of the building came from um, the things that would be stored inside the building. Basically, the, 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 the museum caters for four main items, and that's basically the Zulu history. It also caters for the history of Wat Du uh, since you all know that Kim Shaga and Nandi come from the area. It also encompasses um, the history of the sugar industry, mainly the paper and pulp. Uh, manufacturing industry. One will notice that companies like Mondi uh, are located in this particular area. So this museum would be the storage area where people are keeping these things and viewing these things. This is just an a, a, a artist impression of King Shaka whose grave is just across our site. You will notice that there will be a, a couple of elements that have been taken from uh, the King Shaka uh, statue in here, uh, like the Zulu shield, the spear, and so on. The client requested a very strong emphasis on a, a Zulu element, but not the spear and not the shield. But he was looking for uh, an element like hats, a Zulu hat. This is um, a, a Queen Nandi, who is the mother of, of King Shaka. And our client insisted that we utilize this as our design informer. And you will notice how we interpreted that and infused that into the, into the design seamlessly. That's the view of, of the building, and you can see the strong um, emphasis and the, and the um, influence of, our, of the inspiration of the head of, of Queen Nandi. You can notice the nods, the uh, crown of the head. And also what is notable on the screen is the visual link, is the physical and the visual link between the site next door and our site. Also quite interesting on this, We've used the, the same brick that is that is used on the building next door, which is a Peter Marisbeck brick. And also, what is notable on the screen is the sl is the slit in the in the middle of the head, which links our building visually with the building next door. Basically, this building is going to be uh, housing art artifacts, as I've said earlier on, but also there will be park public performances that that should be happening in here. So. Just underneath where that metal structure is, where 
museum where the museum is written. Underneath there, there will be um, live performances and also there will be live um, exhibition of artwork or anything that is happening on, on, on the museum. The idea is that you will pass if you are a visitor or if you are just walking past standard, you'll be able to see what is happening in the museum. The other thing that we've uh, uh, made sure that we apply in here is that uh, if you drive past at night, uh, this museum, we've made sure that in terms of illumination, you'll be able to see uh, the building in its entirety and, and also the, the, the concept and all of the stats that you are seeing in, in there. Also in this building, we have to play around with the face brick and the detailing of each and every element in this particular building. That's just another view. On the left-hand side, you can see the, uh, the Zulu uh, shield. You can also see the effects of the Zulu head, the use of, of face brick. And again, on this, on this building, like most other public works buildings, we make sure that the materials that we use are vandal proof, easy to clean, easy to maintain, and they keep their life um, looking the same way as they do. And most in interestingly here, we believe that this building, the more it ages, the more it will, it will it, you know, look at its, its, its maturity. And the materials, will, we believe that the materials will be more pronounced as, as it ages. That is why we've used um, the, the, the gray um, as, as steel on, on, on the other side so that when it ages, you don't even see the use of face brick uh, and the use of, of, of different sake color palettes. Uh, sorry, see. Patrick, the, the yeah. part that says museum, is that cotton steel? Or? Yeah, it's not cotton steel. It's not. The reason why we didn't use cotton steel is that cotton steel has got a lifespan to it. So we just use a spray painted black uh, as steel, uh, which you can just hold down so that the building, the intention is that this building should look like this in the next 10, 20, 30 years from now. Oh, I without any maintenance on the outside, except cleaning, of course. That's just a snapshot of, of the insides. We've, we've, we've used uh, timber, we've used um, materials with, which are, are very soft in their palettes and we've used colors that are easy to maintain. And I said, as I said earlier on, the idea is that you want this building to look like this in many years to come. This is the section where um, we're looking at the main um, tower or the head, uh, the Nandi head. And in here, you will notice at the top coming from the ceiling is a material which is taken from the pulp and the paper that is uh, in the industry. We basically used uh, recycled paper to make that. And inside, we, we are going to put some lights in there. And you can see the use of timber. You can see the Zulu pot uh, in there standing as an exhibit. And the walls are going to be used as the exhibition uh, spaces. In fact, even the floors are going to be written with the stories. There will be mosaics on the floor. This is just an artist's impression to show the same. This is the palette of materials that we've used. Uh, right at the top is the uh, Zulu, Zulu pot made out of clay. And uh, you can see the usage of the stone, uh, which, is, which is depicted on our reception desk. You can see the raw timber, uh, which, which we've used on our, on our balustrades and on the interior finishes uh, of, 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 of the museum. At the bottom, you can see the pulp and, and the use of recycled paper in the building. Uh, you can also see the, the balustrades and, um, that are used in the and timber screens that have been used uh, in the building. <clears throat> As part of the brief, uh, the client uh, said we should look at green, um, green principles. So basically you'll find that um, the spaces uh, utilize the south natural light, uh, which is obviously uh, that. Uh, we're using um, solar panels, we're harvesting the water from the roof, and we use a natural light where possible. And the materials that are used in here are materials which are not too harsh uh, onto our environment. This is just a cross section to look at 
the accommodation that is in there. At the first floor, that's where you get um, seminar rooms, you get the curator's office, and just the management of the of the museum. And then right at the bottom, using the double volume space, is all the exhibition spaces. And then all the treatment of the artifacts and all the exhibits is done at the back of the building. This is the um, aerial overview or a drone footage which we took last week um, showing the construction that is done uh, this far. You will notice that the site is quite tight. The uh, reason for that is because this used to be a residential house before, which was donated to the municipality and then converted into, into uh, a museum. Also in this picture, you can see right at the back uh, is the Zulu hat or the Nandi hat uh, coming up. We hope that this will be up in the next uh, four weeks in terms of construction and uh, the building will start to take its shape. It's quite an interesting site to work on. The other thing that we've noticed is the civil unrest uh, that is happening in, in this particular site where business forums do come in and the local people do come in to, you know, to have a look at the uh, you know, business opportunities and some work opportunities. We hope hoping to finish this in six months if there aren't any further disturbances, but it is quite a, a should I say, politically charged uh, to work on. That's just another view and the concrete shuttering that is happening on site. We're going to be looking at another building which we did many years ago and I would say about, we started working on this about eight years ago and it's just recently uh, been finished and there's a lot of history to this uh, building because during construction our main contractor went into liquidation and that came up with uh, lots of challenges. This is a Devon Electricity Center um, uh, building, which is in the middle of town. Uh, on the left, you can see, maybe up on the screen, you can see Devon train station. On the right hand side, you can see at the bottom of your screen, you can see Kingsmead uh, Stadium, and then uh, the, the huge complex of Devon Metro. This building, when we got it, um, it was an existing four story building, and we had to add uh, two floors uh, on top of the existing um, uh, building. It is a national key point, so we are not going to show the internals uh, of this building. Basically, that's where all the electricity of the city is, is being controlled. The interesting thing about this project is that we had to, to add the new floors above, whilst the bottom four floors are fully operational. Uh, it was quite interesting to, to apply hoarding and to protect this building at the bottom and to make sure that the vibrations that happen on the top are kept to the minimal and um, whilst you know, the, the construction is going on. On the left hand side, you can see um, the existing color of the uh, brick that is in there. And you can see this clearly at the bottom of this artist impression of the brick that is left in there. Uh, our brief, as I said earlier on, it, it called for us to extend the control center by adding two floors. Uh, it also looked at the facade treatment. We had to look at adding the, the, the new uh, uh, space, but also linking uh, the, new, the new space to the old space. Also, we had to look at reducing the energy consumption uh, on this, on, on, of this particular building. The other interesting thing here, we had to apply some green uh, architecture principles where we allow the uh, natural light to come in, where we use uh, plants uh, uh, to cover the building up, but also more interestingly, uh, to plant live um, vertical gardens onto this particular building. And the intention here is that as the seasons change, we were hoping that uh, the building will also change in its appearance. So if you've got four seasons in the air, uh, in summer and in winter and in autumn, this building is supposed to be uh, looking slightly different as, you know, as it ages. 
on this particular picture, you can clearly see the light uh, structure on top of the existing one. Uh, also, what is quite interesting, when we were working on this building, the entire roof of the fourth floor was made up of concrete, which means that the client had in mind an idea of extending this particular structure. As a result, the, the two floor addition are made out of uh, uh, I mean, are made out of steel, and also all four sides are actually glazed, so so that the the top section is as light as possible. This allowed us to to work quite seamlessly uh, at the top of the building, whilst we are not disturbing much of the of the bottom floor. We had one incident of flooding uh, on the fourth floor as well, whilst we were working, but no major damage was actually done. Also notably on this particular screen is the use of the greenery, as I've mentioned earlier on. But by the way, this is just an artist impression. It's not the actual building as built now as we speak. What is also quite interesting with the, with the roof line of the of the of the building is that the roof space we had to use that as an outdoor entertainment area. So if you look at the right hand side and also on the middle of the, of the building, you notice that the internal part or the central part protects uh, um, uh, the users of the building from the wind, but it also allows the natural light to come in, and that informed. The, the pitch that we had to use of, of, of the building. We also had to do some wind studies and to look at the wind tunneling and the power of the wind so that uh, the visitors get protected at the top. And in, the, in this particular slide, you can see the sun shading of the east and western sun uh, of the existing floors, plus uh, the more emphasis on the, on, the, on, on the extensions of the building. This is the actual built building. Uh, this picture was taken about a year ago. Um, and on the right hand side, it was uh, taken just after six in the afternoon in the winter, in the winter season. You can see the, you know, the extension at the top and the wind tunneling that I've talked about. And you can see the link of the existing uh, Facebook building being linked up uh, with the top section. On the left hand side, it just talks about the detail of the roof and the usage of the roof, um, uh, as I've talked earlier, on, uh, talked earlier on about. Also, we are harvesting uh, the water from the roof. It stays in the Georgia tanks at the top of the roof, and then it, it gets discharged to the ground floor. The entire ground floor of this uh, particular building, or should I say the most part of it, has got services and parking of the staff members that work in this particular building. We really enjoyed uh, working on this, apart from the challenges that uh, came uh, with this particular building, with the contractor being liquidated, business forums coming in. Uh, it was quite, uh, it was quite a journey. It was quite a journey. Uh, as I said earlier on, we, we, we celebrate the progress and enjoy the journey. And each and every building that we've done uh, generally comes with its own lessons, uh, with its own journey uh, as, as we go. But what we do, we, we basically enjoy the process and, and the outputs of, 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 of the building. Uh, we're going to look at the unbuilt buildings, uh, buildings which we envisaged uh, but never realized, and we thought maybe uh, let's let's show these. And unfortunately, most of the buildings that we design, not all of them get built. Some of them do, but uh, some don't get built. We're going to look at the two uh, uh, buildings. Um, and in here. part of the building This is the International Convention Center, which was aimed to be built uh, in Nell Springs. Uh, it was called the Mombela ICC. Uh, it was meant to seat uh, about 10,000 people. In terms of size, um, it's similar to the Devon ICC, similar to the Cape Town uh, Convention Center. We did this project um, about uh, seven years, six years ago, 2015. Uh, we were hoping to break ground uh, in 2018, but it never happened. 
As part of the brief, uh, we had to come up with the logo uh, of the building. We had to uh, come up with a building that had a strong uh, statement. Our client called this building the Africa's State of the Art Bush Convention Center because it's, it's built in the, in the bush. You see the site as I show you the site context. Uh, it was, we really had fun um, uh, doing this project. Uh, it's a pity that it was never uh, built, but as I've said earlier on, we, we often have more fun uh, working on these things uh, more than the outcome. The outcome is just a result of what we've gone through. The context of the site, uh, what you see in green um, is, is the Crocodile River, uh, which uh, encompasses our site. On the left-hand side is the CBD um, of Nelspreets with shopping centers and offices. And then on the right-hand side uh, is just the farm or agricultural uh, area. Highlighted in yellow is the footprint of our site. Looking at the context, uh, the, the site faces north mainly, and, but more beautifully, it's, it's, it's harked by this uh, existing, very active uh, crocodile river with a waterfall onto the left-hand side or on the, on the western side of the site. And then on the right-hand side, on the, on the eastern side, you've got the bush, and then you've got the views of the gorge. And uh, on the southern side, it's basically the agricultural uh, land and botanical garden. So the setting of this site uh, was an architect's dream uh, in our office. Looking at the, at the site, uh, the northern part is, uh, is occupied by the outdoor uh, spaces. And then we've got a, a huge uh, meandering uh, concourse that separates uh, the building into two, and, or maybe the complex into two. And then on the bottom side, you've got um, the ICC itself. It's, gonna, it's, it's located on the blue section. And then on the yellow side, it's the outdoor exhibition areas facing the south on the flat uh, pieces of ground facing the bush. On the northern side, we, we opted to put the, um, uh, the, the river bungalows or the, uh, the residential units. And then on the right hand side, we, we put the hotel. And then um, the main uh, uh, linking material, I mean, linking concourse is right at the center of the building. And what you see in, in, in Kaki there is the plenary and the expo of the, of the um, ICC. And then outside on the triangular area is the outside exhibition areas. And you can see that the building follows the shape of the site. Apologies, Patrick. I'm just trying to mute someone. Can I please ask attendees to check their microphones just so as not to interrupt the presentation? Thank you. Okay. All right. In here, um, you can see the four components of the building, which is the hotel shown in yellow, the restaurant shown on the um, top uh, on the top left, the bush lodge on top and the ICC shown in, in the maroon color with its subdivisions of the echo and the plenary. And all of these are linked by a, a very active concourse. In the middle is the uh, natural spring, and then in front of the, of the hotel is the north facing uh, swimming pool, which is dedicated to the hotel. Someone will ask me about the parkings. All of the parkings are actually hidden underground. So underneath the, the entire development, we've got a gigantic um, three-level three-level uh, parking space, which uh, you know uh, buries all the cars underneath. And then you've got the major pot crochet area for the different. I mean, for the for the uh, ICC, and then another pot crochet for the hotel. And in here, it just shows the great eye view of the different elements of the of the project. We had to look at the um, green elements of the pro project, water harvesting was one of them where we were requested to 
uh, harvest all of the water that we place uh, in the air. So this diagram here shows you how we are um, harvesting the water and how we're using our natural spring uh, to, to utilize the water that was generated from the area. Also notable in this particular slide is the helipad, which is located right at the center of the building on top of the roofs, so that when the dignitaries arrive, they arrive in a secure environment area and they get dropped right in the middle of the development. We also had to look at um, the access uh, points onto this. Uh, the green area shows you, um, or maybe should I say the elements that are shaded in, 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 in blue, show you the ramps and the escalators are shown in a different color. The staircases are shown in a different color. And the intention here was to make sure that uh, the fire exits, the main circulation cores are clearly defined. And also we had to make sure that this building is friendly to those that have got partial uh, visibility, those that have got disabilities. And generally the, the general public must be able to find their way in and around this particular building. So we had to go through this exercise. You will notice uh, that this building has got a lot of emphasis and a lot of uh, draws a lot of inspiration uh, from the surroundings. Uh, there are zebras in Umalanga, there are lions, there are crocodiles. In fact, the building is located within the Crocodile River. So you will notice that the finishes that have been used on this particular brick building uh, uh, resemble or take their, their, their cue or inspiration from the surrounding. That's the view of the building looking from the uh, the agricultural lands. We've used a lot of uh, timber, uh, synthetic at places, natural at places, and uh, use a lot of steel um, to cover the building up and to achieve the kind of shape uh, that we were wanting. This kind of shape uh, is derived from a crocodile opening up its mouth and with its tail, uh, you know, meandering and, and sitting down onto the environment. You can see the, the natural light being invited onto the building. Uh, this is an artist impression taken in the afternoon of, of, of the building. And the idea is that you were gonna see this gigantic building sitting in the, in the natural environment. This is the main port crochet as they arrive, uh, getting dropped off. And if you are a dignitary, just the members of the public, that's where the buses and cars would drop people off. Some would be using the ramp on the right hand side and some would be using the staircases going up onto the, onto the um, main area. And what you're seeing right on the right hand side is the terrace of the restaurant, different restaurants which would be housed in this particular development. The usage of timber, the usage of um, um, uh, steel and strong engineering um, was exercised in here. We're very fortunate to have an engineer um, who has got uh, design talents embedded in him. So it was very easy uh, to work on this particular project. In fact, before we designed the project, we had to do some international trips to make sure that what we were designing is achievable. So we had to um, go to some uh, international buildings to have, a look at, to have a look at the roof construction, look at the software that we could possibly use to erect this particular building. And it was quite an interesting experience. That's just the different views of, of, of the building, the strong uh, elements um, uh, of the building coming from the outside and to the inside, uh, the scale of the building, the, 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 the communication between, between the different floors using escalators, uh, stairs, use of color, wayfinding. It was quite an interesting uh, project to work, to work on. We have been very fortunate to be included or work on different projects of different size, big and small. And our fondest memories is when we learn, uh, you know, on each and every project. This project, I think up to so far, has been the largest and the complex project that we've ever worked on in our office. There's a section uh, showing the gigantic parking area underground and the building on top, uh, and it shows all the different elements 
of, of, of the center, as I explained earlier on. This is just the, um, a quick view of the building from the different angles. That's just the view uh, from the restaurants, looking at the natural uh, pond. That's just the interior, which I've shown you earlier. That's just another interior and the usage of uh, very long spans that we had to put, we had to imply in here. Engineering uh, solutions showing off. Very minimal columns uh, had to be used in here and very long span spanning trusses we used very deep trusses. This is just a walkthrough via the main concourse. The idea here is just to show the spaces and what's possible to do. We had to uh, show this to our clients uh, in Bombay just to show the, the spaces and, and how best you can utilize uh, the area. You, you get a feeling of uh, like a forest in the main spaces there, Patrick. That's that, was, that was the idea, the usage of the natural colors mm. and the inspiration of the building was the idea. Also very notable here is that we've got very uh, few straight lines in the main building. And um, so everything is very natural. And that's a view at the natural uh, bungalows. That's the gigantic roof um, covering the structure, opening out onto the environment around as a seating area. That's just the main, main concourse. That's just the view from the outside. The intention here was just to show the scale and the massing of the materials. And that's basically, yeah, that this building was not uh, built, but we are very grateful that we're involved in the conceptualization of the same. We're gonna look at the final building that uh, we did here in Devon in Inanda. We did this in about, uh, it was about four years ago. And again, <coughs> it never got built, uh, but we're very fortunate to be involved in the design of it. We were commissioned here by an implementing agent, which was employed by the Truth and Reconciliation um, uh, body uh, to give a building uh, to the area that, that has suffered violently in the, early, in the late 80s, um, uh, the area called Bambai, it's situated in Uganda. This screen shows you the context within which this building is built. Uh, you can see the river uh, that is crossing our site, and you can see the informal settlement uh, that is in and around uh, our site. If this building was built, it was going to be one of the biggest uh, buildings if you compare the scale of the buildings that are in the floor. The yellow uh, uh, denotes the periphery and uh, you know, our, of our site. This is a public building. It, it, it may, excuse me, it mainly com, uh, comprised of the uh, the SAPS uh, uh, police station, satellite police station. It comprised of a community hall. It had uh, some uh, learning spaces at the back. It had uh, spaces just uh, for the community to particularly to use. And in here, you will notice, like other buildings, we've used. Uh, 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 materials that are easy to maintain, use them in their true sense, use them in, in, in as raw as possible. So you can see the use of the face brick, the use of the concrete, the use of the, the, use of the glass, uh, very minimal pallets uh, of the glass. And in here you can see the very strong emphasis of the central uh, circulation and spine of this particular building. That's another view um, and clearly showing the, the main different entry points onto the building. Uh, the, building the, the building is one main building, but each component can be utilized as a standalone, uh, even if the other uh, component is being used. On the left-hand side, you're seeing the SAPS and that's where the charge office is gonna be on the glazed 
down, uh, down uh, downstairs and above above that on the left that's where the offices are, are going to be and you can clearly see the security and the robustness of the materials uh, that are used on the on the saps side and on the right hand side you can see the the community uh, hall and right at the back you're going to see uh, classrooms clinics and things like that This um, uh, slide is just showing the different components of the, of the development. As I've said earlier on, you've got the police station, you've got some administration offices, you've got classrooms at the back, and then you've got the community hall. And between the community hall and the classrooms, sandwiched in there is the outdoor area, uh, which is partially covered. And the idea is that you'd be able to have an, a function on the community hall and be able to completely open the hall onto the courtyard and utilize that for outdoor workshops and things like that. You will see that on our three-dimensional flight through. Uh, Pat, the, the, uh, sorry, Pat, the, the wall of remembrance, what is it about? A lot of people, thanks for the question, uh, Skura, a lot of people died in the early 90s and they lost their lives uh, in this particular area in Bambai. One will remember that there was a huge fight between the two political uh, organizations and a lot of people lost their lives in there. And the community requested that we have names of the people that laid their lives in the, in the area to be to be engraved on the different bricks that we are going to that we're going to be utilized in here so that particular wall and thanks for that that particular wall is basically a um, wall a wall that would be full um, with the names of of the different people that suffered or lost their lives during the battle Mm, yeah, lovely. That's special. Thanks, Brett. Yeah, thanks. So that's the end of this particular slide. And as I said earlier on, we generally focus on making the present as educational and enjoyable as it can be. And we practice that as a continuum. In that way, lots of things fall by the wayside and we enjoy the flow of time. This particular building that is on the left hand side of your screen uh, is a museum that we are working on. And because it's still at the very early planning stage, uh, we aren't going to show it now but it's one of the projects that we are currently working on. And uh, again, we are just enjoying the journey and making sure that we learn as much as we possibly can. If it gets built, uh, we will be lucky uh, and we will enjoy that. But again, if it doesn't get built, uh, we would have learned uh, a lot of things about museum design. And that's the end of our formal presentation. Thank you so much, Patrick. That is absolutely amazing. Uh, and uh, well done on being able to execute large buildings like this. Uh, let me let me just start uh, with the electricity department uh, yes. for Echeguini. Uh, yes. I'm very disappointed uh, that you don't trust your fellow architects to look inside the building. One of <laughs> us could have figured out where to switch the, um, uh, what, what do you call it, the electricity kind of thing? Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, international key the low shedding. We could have figured out where the low shedding button is. Yeah, yeah. That. 
but yeah. but uh, I do understand that. Um, but uh, my question there is, um, you know, most engineers, even if you are changing the roof, they have, have, have actually wanted to look at the foundations, etc. Um, you are adding uh, two floors uh, there. Uh, yes, they are uh, lightweight. Uh, what do the engineers say? Do they have to look at the foundations or what, 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 what was the input? It was a very interesting project. We, we had to do um, a two-phase geotechnical investigation. So the first one you do the, you know, just the top of the thing. And then the second one is where you do a very detailed uh, thing. And we also had to test the strength of the existing foundations. So, so that when we add what we are adding on top, it doesn't compromise the structure. And also what is quite interesting with that building is that whoever designed it uh, earlier on and are respected is that they knew that in some few years to come, there would be you know, additions onto the building. As a result, the top floor of the fourth floor has got, um, or maybe at the time it had a concrete roof and it had some column stacks that uh, you know we're allowing us to just clip on and be able to you know to do the structure on top okay okay lovely um colleagues uh, i'm ready to take questions uh i've got another question again for you pet the the bombella your interpretation of the forest canopy is lovely in the in the in the main spaces um you look you look quite close to the water there what were the eia implications and again, or, that was, or even the vegetation, which was on the side. Yeah. If you go to site now, it, it's currently used as a commercial farm. Mm -hmm. So what we had to do, firstly, um, we had to do the, the, you know, the EIA and to check how far can we put the building. And anything, as you know, anything closer to 30 meters uh, triggers immediately your, your EIA. Mm -hmm. But the, the interesting thing about the EIA itself uh, is that before they do the entire public participation thing and, and all that goes with the EIA, they have to see what the building will end up looking like. And that, uh, and that is the part that um, brought us in and we were able to, to actually design and inform the EIA um, study itself. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, quick. Um, I'll open the floor for any questions or comments. Thank you so much, uh, Patrick. That was a, actually a beautiful, beautiful presentation. I think for me, uh, especially the 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 clip at the, at the, uh, the, 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 the clip when you start uh, that shows your office and everything. It just shows how you you take your work seriously. You 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 run your practices. You look like that that person who finds every fold that they are looking for. <laughs> like yeah, that. Yeah, 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 <laughs> so yeah, yeah. thanks, thanks for sharing that. It, it's it's good to see and it's very, it's very inspiring. We try. Yeah, lovely, lovely. Uh, no questions for Patrick. No comments. Anyone? Uh, Adima. Morning, everybody. Um, hi, Patrick. I just wanted to say thank you very much for your presentation. Can see my face. Um, thank you very much for your presentation. I always think it's very interesting, you know, and, and we don't hear it very often. And it's not, it's not a critique, I suppose, of anybody else, but a, a, a comment to you and maybe a conversation that can go beyond this space is about the integration of a cultural expression um, in works of a public scale. Um, mm. And what that means, I suppose, in a, in a, in our province, in our country, you know, that's that's admittedly kind of questioning the values, I suppose, of, of a national her cultural heritage or national cultural identity. Um, mm. And so I think that was that was a really interesting consideration in each of your projects that we haven't seen um, haven't seen before. Um, and also just as someone who works with city architects and with um, on, the, on those kinds of projects, just I really appreciated the, the nods to the complexities of having to consider the maintenance, but still create something very interesting in terms of its material and form. So thank you very much for that. And maybe it is a, a suggestion, Skura, to keep maybe 
start keep start keeping a list of names of people that we can start talking to about this cultural expression. I particularly think it would be interesting for um, for master's students and the university students to engage in that kind of dialogue, you know, because they do come they do come to design from a very strong kind of theoretical or conceptual perspective. And I think that Patrick has managed to translate that into reality really nicely. So that was really beautiful. Thank you for that. It was also nice to see some very familiar faces in your in your office. So yes, thanks so much. Really great. Thank you. Thanks, bro. Lovely, lovely. Thank you, Adima. And, and I, I, th I think the importance of what you are commenting on, Adima, is that um, a cultural uh, expression on a drawing board is different to uh, a built uh, structure. And if 100%. someone can uh, uh, be able to work with that and play with that to, to, to uh, an extent that it's actually in integral uh, to the architecture, that's definitely something for us to, to learn from. So thanks for that, Patrick. Thank you. Can I, can I add something here? Hello, yep. Patrick. Don't Come Hello. Hello. Well done, well done. Thank your you. Three your three dimensional kind of approach from start to finish is the correct approach, I believe, in architecture. And your whole you. team, you and your team, well done. Thank, Thank you, Don. Thank, you. Thank okay. you. For those that didn't know, I used to work for Don for many years, and uh, I'm very inspired by you, Don. Thank you. If you didn't mention it, I was going to. I was going to. <laughs> no, I did. I did. And, yeah. Lovely. Great. I'll take Karuni and then and then Professor Adibai after us. Karuni. Um. Morning, Patrick, um, and uh, thank you. I, I really enjoyed that. Uh, um, I, for everybody I, I, who, d who doesn't know uh, me too well in terms of when I lectured, I taught Patrick in first year, and he yeah. was the brightest. He was the brightest spark. He had so much energy, and he had such passion for architecture. Patrick, very proud of what you've done. You know. Um, and also, also your your journey is so authentic. You know, it's so it's so Patrick. You know, I, I don't think I don't think many people would have taken the Patrick approach. So my question to you would be, what do you you know what was special about your your journey in in practice, and uh, what lessons can you give young emerging um, um, black architects? Um, and how can you help them? You know, because I'm sure you're a role model. Um, if you could just talk to that for a few minutes. Thanks. Thank you, Karini. Uh, I really, Karini taught me for three years at ML Sultan, and uh, she's one of the very inspiring teachers, and I'm very humbled to be uh, here today. Uh, a lot of people really. Um, participated in my growth uh, to, what I, to, what, to what I am uh, today. I don't even think that uh, I've reached my capacity yet. I think we've just begun, uh, you know, to start this enjoy, I mean, uh, this enjoyable journey of being an architect. Uh, I think the main thing, uh, Karin, which I can say to, to, to students is that, or someone who is really aspiring to be an architect, uh, is, to, is to put one foot at a time in front of, of, of the other foot and make sure that you really enjoy, but also you understand uh, the steps that you make uh, because growth just doesn't come. It, it's minor steps, it's the, it's the brick by brick that makes the world. And, and if people concentrate on the small things that they, did, that they do, generally speaking, inclusive of architecture, uh, you generally win in whatever you do. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Patrick. Mm. For thank you for that uh, Thanks, question, Karuni. Uh, of you. course, we do know you, uh, Karuni. So yeah. we do know you. Thanks, uh, Professor Adebayo. Hi, Patrick. Hello, my prof. <laughs> yeah, it's just nice to nice to see your work. I like I like to attend this meeting, assist, and to see how you guys are developing, uh, yeah. which make me happy. Thank that you. is one of the most important thing. And the other thing that I I find in your work where, you know, when I go around the studio and I talk to all of you or everywhere, I like to look the personality of the of the architect himself. Uh, those days you used to be a happy, laughing guy, enjoying yourself. When I look your your building, I could see the remembrance of your, your psychological interpretation of yourself in the building. This is something that I I quite see 
you, you feel enlightened when you look at your building. The other thing I like also is that you, the way you use your space, you did not concentrate everything only outside space. You also looked the internal space and the various materials, especially that like those ones where you use the wooden structure and the, you covered the pot on top of that uh, pedestal. Also was interesting. I was expecting that that pot can be translated to a light so that you get the light inside the, that you put on top of that, which is very uh, interesting. And also your composition of inside and outside of your, of your building, given that you understand our, our uh, temperature, our climatic factor, which you took into, into account. And what I enjoy mostly too, which I always advise uh, at least some of your colleagues who work in my office, they know I do a very large project. I'm very happy that to see the large project you are doing. Whether it is built or not built, you yourself, you know, you have learned a lot, the complexity in such yeah. a project, the detailing, and not everything is going to be uh, the composition, how you fit together, but there are certain aspects that we come out so well that you will never learn in any other project because I see the, the long span of those things, the way you crack them out and also the membrane of the structure, the, the, the structural element of the, of the roof. For me who yeah. come from architectural engineering would be very, it's very interested to see, to see that. And also that uh, you, you continue to be encouraged Regardless whether it is built or not, that is the that is the game of the of the of the uh, of the profession. You may be surprised; yeah. they may call you back four or five years down the line and say, "Now we have the money; we wanted to do it." So yeah. if you don't do it, yeah. you never know. And I like yeah. that one. So it may is just to give a comment on what I've seen and the, your development. I'm really pleased and happy to see that. So thank, thank you. you very much. Keep it well. And uh, and I hope that you guys and your colleagues also have a dialogue. Also, apart from showing us in the institute, that you also have your own your own group where you dialogue among your yourself. Because that's what uh, Karoni was trying to mention: how you can transform that experience, especially when the when the contractor uh, could not complete the work. I could imagine what you will face at that moment. So thank you very much. I'm very grateful to see your work. Well done. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof. Thanks, Matt. Uh, Ruben. Uh, you are muted, President. You are muted. Uh, Ruben. Okay, try, yeah. try, try. <laughs> so, so. Um, I fully endorse what everybody else has said. Um, mine is just to say, Patrick, congratulations. Uh, it's an incredible body of work, um, particularly uh, in the light of your journey. But I have a question. Yes. How many of these projects have you submitted to the water program? To so that? To the awards program. It's none, uh, Ruben. Can you tell us why? Hey, um, there's no specific reason. I think I'm just a humble person by nature. And uh, when Skura called me in this particular thing, I said no a couple of times. And then he insisted that I must be here. And then I said, okay, fine, I'll be here. So it was purely by respect and honor of, of Square, but I'll ask I really, another question. I'll ask but another question. Time one should consider uh, doing these things. I'll ask another question. Yes, that's true. How many times have you submitted a project to be published in the SIA KZN journal? None. None. Uh, in so fact, I've asked to do one. One uh, storytelling exercise uh, which happened I think two years ago with Kura, with you Skura. That's and correct, we, yes. We one uh, interior design project that we worked on. I, I, uh, I, hope, I, I hope you have healed from me twisting your arm on that one. 
Yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, maybe I need to consider these things then. I think the reason why I ask is that uh, people like yourself uh, are huge assets to this profession of ours um, at a whole series of levels. Um, as a mentor, as a role model, as a as somebody that we'd like to highlight and, and celebrate. Um, and somehow um, I plead with you to consider um, putting your hand up to, to firstly be proud. You are seriously proud of your work, as you should be. Um, and I think what, what needs to happen is that the industry should also be proud of your work. And the only way that they can is if you buy the ticket to participate in the, in the, in the awards program. Okay. Um, and I know the history of the awards program. I also know the fact that um, the awards program, the rules, um, need to be looked at. The editorial board of the journal and, and the ASA, Architecture ASA, also need to rethink the way that these publications are put together. And here's one body of work um, that should trigger it, if, if it does anything. Um, so I'm asking that you, you really consider putting your hand up because you're there. Um, Thank you. And, and people need to look at what, what you what you produce. Thank, Thank you. you. A mouthful, a mouthful, Robert. Thank you so much. Uh, and, and Patrick, I mean, if you if you look back, just before you come in, Adima, if you look back uh, that uh, from Varsity, when I first saw you, it's now been 15 years. Yeah. It's absolutely amazing. I, I, I think sometimes uh, only when you sift through your work, looking for something to present you realize actually i've done quite a quite a quite a, quite a bit you know so yeah. i mean i mean it's it's, it's been an absolutely fantastic journey to, to observe um adima thanks um just a follow-up question patrick so seeing that you were so you so humbly accepted schooler's invitation to do a practice breakfast and yeah. given your personal relationship with karuni Yes. I wonder about you extending your humility to be invited into a conversation um, and participation, I suppose, in opening up the awards and opening up the journal um, in SAI KZN specifically with us and participate in sharing some of the work that you've shared today um, in print form in the journal. Um, Karuni and, and, Yesh and Yeshen Lakhanov are guest editing um, a journal and I think your work as a continuity from Changing Colors, Gura, um, would find its place there. Um, Absolutely. And find value in our region. So if you if you would if you would consider it, I'm just planting the seed, and then I can leave it to Karudi and Yashin to to engage with you later. But I think it's necessary that we that we document because I am a firm believer that documentation is visibility. And so it was really great. Um, and I just echo Ruben's sentiments. So yes, so I see you smiling. So I'll take that as a yes, I agree. I'm happy to participate and join with you. <laughs> you are, yeah, we'll, we'll leave it with a smile and we'll keep it down as a yes. So you can't change your mind later. Nice, uh, you. Great idea. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Patrick, Patrick uh, do, you, do you have a response? No, I'm fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Uh, 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 before Monique comes on, uh, on my speech on Tuesday, uh, I mentioned that uh, we actually have to take architecture beyond each other. Uh, most of the time we celebrate each other, we celebrate awards amongst each other in our publications, but we actually don't put it out uh, to the public. And this is what we are actually gonna start doing now. Um, if you miss the inauguration on Tuesday, uh, not to worry, the, the, the speech will be circulated. Uh, but this one of the most important things is that uh, we are not in the in the in the in the public space where people really really appreciate us. Uh, people have their own perceptions about us, but we have to tell that narrative, you know, to the public. Uh, so, pet uh, architecture publication and beyond. Uh, Monique. 
Hi, Patrick. Um, sorry, my laptop um, um, camera isn't working very well at all. Um, but I just wanted to say, um, wow, you are a rock star architect and just so proud to have someone of your caliber here in our province. And I just want to reinforce and um, and 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 agree with Skura, Adima, Karuni. We really, really want to see more of your work. I mean, you're 15 years graduated and you're doing this caliber of work. I mean, yeah, um, it's truly astounding. And I think you must you must really be proud. And we would we would like to see more of you. You are uh, definitely a, an example to all our youngsters. Thank you. Thank you, Monique. Thanks for the words of encouragement, Monique. No, absolutely. Uh, you're not even 65 yet, uh, Patrick. Uh, the architect is 65. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's really, really lovely to see. Um, yeah. Anyone with a question? Everybody's oh. happy. OK. Uh, Pat, your parting shot? Uh, just to say thank you for lending me the space and the ear for those that listen, and, and that's it. Thank you very much. Lovely. Thank you so much, Patrick. And um, yeah, we'll, so we'll be in charge then to, to see how we take the conversation further. Okay. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Patrick. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I must yes, say guys. that these things are just the most amazing forums and opportunities to listen to people and um, yeah. it would be great if we broaden the, the conversation and more people comment and, and, and voice their views um, yeah. or yeah. challenge one another on some of the more provocative things that kind of come out in these conversations. Yeah. Um, thanks very much. Yeah. Thank, thank you, thank Patrick. You. Thank, you. thank you, all the best. Yeah. Keep yeah. Thank, thank you, everyone. You. Have a good weekend. Thank you, Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Bye. 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 Bye.